So I finally got my hands on my first ever 3D printer. Let's talk about it. What is up everyone? How you doing today? I hope you're enjoying your day. My name is David DeFranco from daviddefran.co. That's my personal website right below. It's always there. Click it and explore. I mean, especially if this is your first time here. I'm a full-time content creator. I make product reviews such as this one. I'm always streaming live on YouTube. I'm extremely active on social media such as Twitter and especially Instagram stories lately. So check that out as well. And well, I just love being online. And of course, part of being online includes getting opportunities like today. Flashforge was so nice enough to send me out. Again, my first ever 3D printer, the Flashforge Adventurer 4. It's right behind me. Currently it's off. Uh, because I don't want the fan noise in the background. But even with that said, fan noise is actually quite low. Check this out. Let's turn it on. Yeah, did you hear that? I mean, obviously it gets a little louder while printing, but I gotta say, it's surprisingly not loud at all. But for now, let's just turn this off. And let's focus on the video. Okay, so Flash Forge, first of all, thank you so much for making today's video possible. I truly, truly, do appreciate it because my regular viewers know very well by now over the years I've mentioned yeah I mean I want to get a 3d printer eventually and you know time went on life gets busy you just kind of forget about things but of course when this opportunity presented itself I jumped on it right away so thank you guys you're amazing and I'm just saying that because I love creating content especially when it comes to physical content and honestly I don't get to do that enough, so the fact that I can kind of turn this into a side hustle, in theory, over time, that is huge. Okay, but anyway, let's focus on the printer itself. Let's not focus on me. So the Adventure 4 3D printer comes fully assembled and enclosed, which is amazing because per my research, apparently this is not the norm. I mean, sometimes you have to actually assemble the printer yourself. and. Thank God I don't have to do that because, I mean, yeah, I could probably pull it off. I'm fairly knowledgeable when it comes to that sort of thing. But the fact that it was assembled, that's amazing. Very, very convenient. And of course, the setup process was a complete breeze. It was so, so easy to set up. Okay, so it automatically walks you through the automatic leveling build plate process. And then you easily load the filament using the built-in filament spool holder. Heavy emphasis on the word filament, in case you didn't hear that, I'll say it again, filament. Not only does it sound cool, but honestly, I didn't know what this stuff was called until I got the 3D printer in my hands. And guys, that's how new I am to the whole 3D printing game. So the fact that this is so easy to use out of the box, I just really, really appreciate that. And of course, it's been a great learning experience so far. Oh, and by the way, that's it. The 3D printer is set up, you unbox it, you plug it in, you do the automatic leveling process, you load the filament on the side, and you're good to go. And of course, you just download the software. I put it on my MacBook Pro right behind me. My 2015 MacBook Pro, keep in mind, this is a 2015 model and it runs the software beautifully. And of course, I will show my first ever 3D print in a moment, so stay tuned. Okay, so let's head on over to the official FlashForge website and look over some of the official specs for the Adventure 4 3D printer. The overall dimensions are as follows, 19.7 inches length, 18.5 inches width, and 21.7 inches height. And guys, I gotta say, the 3D printer, it's large, but it's not overly large. I mean, as you can hopefully see, it fits just fine on a standard size desk, with plenty of room to spare for things such as your MacBook Pro or anything you prefer to print from. The overall weight is 44.3 pounds. The built-in touchscreen display is 4.3 inches, which in my opinion is just big enough. And it has an HEPA H13 air filter. Gotta be honest, as a 3D printing newbie, don't really know what that means, but the words air filter, yeah, I, I, guess, I guess I could figure that out. It's basically going to be filtering the air to make sure it's a healthy and safe process. Now, in terms of connectivity, you can print via a variety of standards from using a USB stick to printing over Wi-Fi, which is what I currently do. Love it, it works just fine. Ethernet connectivity is even an option. Very cool, I respect that. And finally, cloud printing, which honestly, I did not get a chance to test out, but cloud printing is pretty self-explanatory nowadays. 
so I'm just gonna assume it works just fine. The printing technology used by the Adventure 4 is called fused filament fabrication. And the maximum print volume, in other words, the overall maximum size of your prints is the following. 8.7 inches by 7.9 inches by 9.8 inches. So of course, I mean, you're not gonna be printing huge, huge objects by default, but if you truly know what you're doing, there's nothing stopping you from printing multiple parts and then assembling those parts to form a bigger overall print. And finally, printing and completing and removing your prints is incredibly easy thanks to the magnetic and flexible plate. And guys, I gotta say, the magnet is super strong. All right, so with all that said, you're probably wondering, David, what did you print? Did you print anything life-changing? Did you print anything like out of this world? As of right now, no, but I did print a few things, so here we go. My first ever print was this, a tiny cube with a base. Yes, you can have a baseless print, but for my noobness, I wanted to rely on using bases, you know, just to get things started. But I gotta say, this actually worked out very well. Yeah, it's incredibly basic. It's built into the software. That's why it's so basic. I just wanted to print, you know, just a quick example, just to see what this thing could do and make sure it works perfectly, and it did, thankfully. And well, I figured I gotta turn this basic structure into something, right? So me being a huge fan of The Office, hence the shirt, and this guy, Kevin Malone, love this character, he now sits proudly on this little box as if it's his pedestal in my office. He sits there every, uh, I guess technically, he stands there every single day. So it's pretty cool, I mean, yeah, it's an incredibly basic structure, but the fact that I 3D printed this myself and already found a use for it, that's pretty cool. All right, Kevin, get out of here. This one, I admit, I messed up a little bit. I don't know, I mean, it just didn't go as smoothly as it could have, and it's probably my fault because I'm still learning. But despite messing up, this 3D print actually looks really cool. It's got like an abstract 3D vibe going. And honestly, I'm keeping it. I'm not throwing this out. This next one, I just printed today. This is a miniature scale of the Eiffel Tower in Paris, mm, buddy. Never been there, but hopefully someday I'll be there. Okay, but seriously guys, look at this. Like this is so cool. It's so much smaller than my hand, but the fact that I 3D printed a miniature Eiffel Tower with this contraption behind me, it's just so cool. I love it. And guys, I'm just getting started. I'm going to be printing so many things in the future. And finally, saving the best for last, by far my favorite 3D print, a low polygon count of Pikachu. Look at that. Is that not cool? I love Pokemon. I love Pikachu. Who doesn't love Pikachu? So of course, when I saw this on the website that I found, I can't think of the name right now, but the um, website is right below. Check it out. They have a ton of free downloads to use. Guys, I found this and right away, I was like, I need this in my life. And it prints it out perfectly. Look at the detail. Now, of course, again, I'll say it one more time. This is a low polygon count. So this took maybe, I wanna say like an hour and a half to hour 40 minutes. I'm pretty sure it was like an hour and 45 minutes-ish. But of course, this is a very basic print. If I wanted to do a much more high resolution print with the Adventure 4, then I could. But I mean, it's gonna take a lot longer. And yes, you have my word, I will be doing detailed 3D prints in the future, including a Tesla. Yes, I actually saw a Tesla on that website that's again, linked right below, and I will be printing that in the future. I just have a feeling it's gonna take a little while to print, so I just wanna make sure I have enough time to be around the printer, just for safety reasons. I mean, I haven't had any issues, but in my opinion, when 3D printing, you should always be within a proximity, you know, of your device, just for safety purposes. I mean, for me, it's kinda like, I would never put my clothes in a dryer and then leave my house. So I guess that's a fair example. Anyway, there you go guys, my low polygon count Pikachu. I love this thing, by far my favorite 3D print yet. And I just did this one yesterday. All right, so finally let's talk pricing and availability. How much is the Flash Forge Adventure 4 3D printer gonna cost you? As of today, I don't have an official number or an official exact release date. However, clicking the link right below to the official Flash Forge USA website will give you all the information you need. So yeah, definitely check it out. And hey, perhaps treat yourself for the upcoming holiday season. I know we're currently in the summer, but guys, think about it. Christmas is right around the corner. And if it were me, <laughs> this thing would make me so happy on Christmas day. Why are we talking about Christmas right now? 
I don't know, I'm just excited. Okay, but seriously, Flash Forge, thank you so much for this opportunity. I truly, truly do appreciate it. And guys, I'll say it again, who knows? This could be the beginning of something huge for me. Maybe I'll turn this into a side hustle because you guys know me. I'm always looking for ways to generate income. So yeah, I mean, who knows? Maybe I could 3D print some objects and sell them on Etsy. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed this review. Keep in mind, I am by no means a knowledgeable 3D printer as of today, but this has been a very, very fun product for me to use, and I'm looking so forward to learning it even more in the coming months. And of course, if you guys have any questions for me, just let me know in the comments right below, and I'll do my best to respond to those comments. Thank you guys so much. I hope you're enjoying your day, and of course, I hope you're staying safe, and I'll talk to you soon. Peace.